Hello everyone and welcome to a Minecraft video. My name is Shells124 and today I wanted to show you guys how to build some basic architecture. Specifically I wanted to cover gothic architecture and gothic arches. So a lot of times when I see people do gothic architecture I see them build these beautiful buildings from the outside but then once you go inside it tends to be rather boxy and empty and plain. You don't tend to see a lot of gothic arches, uh, at least uh, not in the grand scale that you would in a normal building. So what is a gothic arch and why are they made? Well, before there were gothic arches, the two types of architecture were post and lintel and roman arches. And one of the main issues with those is that they put a lot of weight on the walls, which meant that you couldn't really poke big holes in it for windows, which meant that it tended to be rather dark and awful inside. The whole point of having gothic architecture was to allow for these big stained glass windows. So in order to put the weight of the ceiling off of the walls, they instead distributed it off to either side into the columns and the ribs of the vault which made it so that way they could open up the wall for these big windows. The pointed arches also allowed them to build their buildings a lot taller than they could before. Uh, this was important for specifically cathedral builds because the architects wanted to encourage the people to gaze up as they entered the church as a symbol as though they were gazing up into the heavens. So with that in mind, we're going to go ahead and start building. The first thing that you should always build when building a gothic arch is the arches themselves. It may seem a little bit counterintuitive to start with the inside structure of the building, but if you build the outside first, you're going to have a hard time lining up your arches. You also have to determine how thick your columns are first and foremost. You could either have a single column up going up for your arches, but for this build, I'm actually going to design it the columns in a plus shape to make them a little bit thicker. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is start laying out the floor. I find it really frustrating if I'm in the middle of building something and then I realize that my count was off by one and then I have to tear it all down and redo it. It's a little bit easier if you're using world edits so that way you can select things and move things from there but overall it's just a better idea to lay out your floor pattern to make sure your count is correct first. Now there are two different heights of gothic arch that I wanted to do with you today. One is the smaller gothic arches and the other is the big gothic arch. Um, we'll start with the smaller one. For these, uh, make sure that you keep it an even number in between your columns, otherwise it will look too much like a roman arch rather than a pointed arch. So starting with the plus shape, I'm going to go ahead and put about seven blocks in between each pillar here. Depending on what size you want to do, it can go anywhere between five to nine, or if you're really ambitious, you could go up to even larger numbers like 13 or 15. For right here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blocks in between each columns. And what we're going to do is going to lay out a square. I'm marking out the center of each of the sides, partially because it makes it a lot easier to use world edit afterwards. The height of your arches doesn't really matter so long as it is taller than it is wide. In this case, I'm going to build it 11 blocks up, so that way it's 7 blocks in between and 11 blocks up. So we're doing 7 11. Ha 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 ha. I'm using polished andesite, just that way it's easier for you viewers to see exactly how many blocks I am using. Alright, when building your arch or any kind of curve in Minecraft, you start with a number like, say, 3 or 4, and then you count down as you move up the arch. So we're just going to start going up by 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And then we count down by 1, so we go up by 2. And then we would count down by going up by 1, and then meeting in the middle. So long as there's a point in the art, the very top, it doesn't matter too much. 
And when you're doing this, you can uh, repeat numbers. That'll become more important when you're doing the larger arch. It doesn't really matter too much for these smaller arches. Ta-da! All right, at this point, you have your basic frame for your Gothic arch, the, the small one anyway. At this point, you want to take your calcite, which is your boring block right here, and we're going to make a plus sign on top of this thing. This is just so that way you can find your center. The next thing you need to do is we're going to bring from this corner block, we're going to bring that corner up to that top block, using following the same pattern as before. So one, two, three, and then we move over one, so that way it's in a diagonal line. If you're wanting to, you could draw a diagonal line across your floor, and this is the line that you're following to meet up to the middle. So one, two, three, one, two, one, like that. And then we just repeat that same thing to all the sides. Ta-da! The next thing we're going to do is fill in the gaps. This is really easy to do for the smaller arch and really kind of a pain to do with the bigger arch. But for the smaller arch, we don't have to worry about the bigger arch. We just fill it in. Ta-da! We now have one little gothic arch. Isn't it cute? Now what we need to do is copy it with world edit. I'm just gonna place a block here, just that way I can go boop, hit that section, and come up here, and position two, boop, go. And I'm going to copy it from this block right here, the center block on off to one side. Copy, move to the other side. And paste. Poof. Something bad happened. Oh, right. Undo. Paste minus error. Keep in mind to do that because otherwise it will delete stuff that you don't want it to delete. All right. So now we have two little gothic arches side by side. This is important because the big gothic arch will actually cover the distance of exactly two of these. We're going to now lay out the floor plan for the bigger arch. It's easier if you lay it out as a perfect square. If you're looking up actual designs for how cathedrals are laid out, a lot of times gothic arches aren't in perfect squares. But when you're building in Minecraft as a perfect square, you can follow exact diagonals if you're not on a perfect square you'll end up with weird weirdness that doesn't always look right okay at this point what you need to do is we're actually going to copy these little gothic arches and we're going to move it over to the other side so what we do is we do copy turn to face this way say flip and paste Mine's there. Did I? Oh, there it goes. Psst. Just took it a moment to load. Alright. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of this floor with calcite. At this point, what we can do is I'm going to raise up this pillar so that way it is even with the top of this gothic arch. And then to make it the taller arch be the same size as the smaller arch, so that way my stained gla glass windows all remain the same size, I'm going to raise this up by 11, just like that one was 11. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. At this point, we need to actually start making our larger gothic arch. 
we're going to follow the similar pattern to the one down here, but we're going to just make it bigger. Sometimes we have to repeat numbers in, in the uh, series, so you can't just do 4, 3, 2, 1, because you're gonna, not going to make it all the way to the middle. So you'll do something like 4, 4, 3, 3, 3, 2, 2, 1, 1, something like that. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1. And then once you reach that point, you start moving in towards the center, counting up. So 1, 2, that way. One, two, but I, we always want to leave just one at the top so that way it looks like the pointed arch. So we cap it. Ta da! And now we just repeat that shape all the way around. You'll notice that I didn't bring these pillars all the way up to the top here. And the main reason for doing that is because this is where you have to decide whether you're doing a six-pointed arch or a four-pointed arch. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to be doing a four-pointed arch like I did in the example over there. I'll go ahead and demonstrate how to do either a six-pointed arch or a four-pointed arch and leave it up to you which one that you'd like to do for your design. Generally speaking, a four-pointed arch was more commonly used towards the end of the Gothic period because it is actually more structurally sound and easier to build than a six-pointed arch. The difference between the two types of arches is whether the ribs connect to just the four corners of the arches or if it also connects to the middle pillars. Hence, either four or six. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing that we did for the smaller arch, which is to make a plus sign in the very center, just to find our center point. Now our goal is to bring the ribs up from the corners up to the top. So same thing that we did for the smaller arch, we're going to follow the same guidelines we have here, just in the direct diagonal. This is the part that's a lot easier to do when you have a perfect square. If you're trying to do this not as a perfect square, you will struggle since you're using world edit so you can then copy it and rotate it and paste it all the way around so assuming that you were doing a uh, a six pointed arch you would then make the ribs for this one coming up so that's what a six pointed arch would look like the hard part would then be filling in these gaps which is Kind of a pain to try to do. So just to be easy on ourselves, I'm going to delete these. Da, 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 da. In my example, I just put in some additional little stained glass windows. You can choose to do that, or you could just raise this pillar all the way up to the top. Your choice. Now comes the hard part. Yay! We're going to have to fill in these gaps between the main shape that you want to come across at the very end is the shape of a four-pointed star in the very center. Um, other, if you don't do that, then it tends to look a little bit boxy. But I'll, I'll show you what I mean as I fill in. The bottom is the simplest. I always start with the bottom. And you could just fill it in as is and see how you feel about it. This is though what I mean by having it be too boxy, is after a while it kind of looks like you just have straight lines going out. Um, if however you started shaping this out as a four pointed star, it might look a little bit different. Something like that does work, but you'll notice that it doesn't look particularly organic. So if you're wanting to make your build look a little bit nicer, you'll just round out these corners a little bit more. Something more like this. At this point we can use world edit to then copy this one segment all the way around. Alright, at this point we have our skeleton. 
of our gothic arches. Now we need to make the skin. This is one of the reasons that it's a lot harder to uh, make your gothic arches line up is because the outside of your building really ought to be the skin. And if you build an animal based off of its skin before you build their bones, their bones won't function right. All right, so what I've done here is I've raised up the pillars so that way they're even with the top of my arch. So for the wall, we're actually going to make the wall even with the outside of our plus, uh, plus sign here. The reason I'm doing this is partially for depth. Um, it may look a little bit flat on the outside, but um, it will mean that you'll have more depth for the stained glass windows as seen from the inside. If you have the stained glass windows, even with your arches, it may look a little bit funny. And it, it just looks better to have the arches more defined. So I'm just going to make this a big flat wall. Bam. All right. Now from the inside, we can poke out where we want to have our stained glass windows. For this, I want to make it cover basically as much as this uh, wall as I possibly can make it. And then you can fill in this section with an arbitrary design for a stained glass window. Doing proper glazing and making cool looking stained glass windows is a topic that I might save for another video. I feel like this video would go on way too long if I had stopped and talked about how to make some proper stained glass windows. If you're worried about it looking rather flat, that's okay. Um, you can actually add in things like window sills on the inside and the outside. That's all I'm going to do for the outside right now, just because I'm going to go over some of it more afterwards. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing or up here. Um, I will note that when you're making, deciding the height of your bigger uh, arch, keep in mind that you will be putting a roof on top of this. So if you wanted to make a bigger roof, um, you would then want to raise your arch up even higher unless you wanted stun stumpy windows. All right, I'm just going to select from top to bottom. Fill with calcite. Bunk. And I'm going to go ahead and fill in this gap with calcite as well. From here, I can mark out my windows again. Oop. Oh yeah, I should probably mention what you can also do in here is um, see how that look. This section looks a little bit awkward. You can actually turn this into a smaller arch by doing that to it. All right. The next thing I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about is buttresses. No, not butts. Buttresses. The whole point of a buttress is because of these arches, there is still a lot of weight being distributed onto these walls and they threaten to fall over. So the point of a buttress is to hold the wall up. There are two different kinds of buttresses that you've probably heard about. One is just regular buttresses and the other is flying buttresses. And I'm going to go ahead and cover both of them. Let's picture you are trying to hold a wall up. If you put your back to the wall, and lean your whole weight up against the wall, you are a buttress because your butt's against a wall. If you, however, stand about a foot away from the wall and hold your arms out and use your arms to hold up the wall instead, you are a flying buttress because your butt, oh, never mind, that doesn't really work here. Anyway, um, the point is that uh, you are then a flying buttress. Your body is the pier while you're arms are the semi-arch holding up the wall. When you are deciding whether to use buttresses or flying buttresses, um, a buttress tends to look visually heavy. So we tend to avoid using those up towards the top of the build and instead put them down. 
A buttress tends to be a rather wedge-shaped thing. And keep in mind it comes to the bottom of your arch. So right here, which in this case is even with, uh, even with our windows. And from there we make a little bit of a wedge. It doesn't have to go all the way down to the bottom, just so that way it's a little bit of a wedge leading up to it. Now to make it more visually interesting, and so that way it's the full length of your pillar uh, uh, in the center, I'm actually going to make this three wide. And there we have it. We have our buttresses. Now we're going to go ahead and make some flying buttresses. So your flying buttresses are going to be a little bit more difficult. To make them structurally sound, they're actually even with these outside pillars. So we're just going to raise this pillar all the way up until it is even with even with the top of our arc, uh, big arch over here. On top of your pier, there is what's called a pinnacle. Um, usually a pinnacle is uh, point shaped or spire shaped. Keep in mind that not every flying buttress has a pinnacle, but most Gothic architecture does. So to make this look more like a point, what we're going to do is we're going to put three on top and then three walls on top. You can make your pinnacle look however you want. Um, this is just a really boring looking pinnacle. If you're really wanting to be fancy, you can do something like this just to give it a little bit more depth. All right, this is going to make a half arch leading up to that spot. I'm gonna go ahead and lay out the top of the arch is actually just going to be a straight line going all the way down. And then we do the half arch. I made it using walls just to add a little bit of depth. You can use full blocks if you want to. It's going to be similarly designed where we have three here, up two, one, one, two across, one there. I actually made that one too tall. There. So there's a flying buttress and we're going to go ahead and copy it over so that way it's even with both of those. Now you could just leave it like this or you could do what I did over there which is provide more flying buttresses that lead to the other flying buttresses. Um, what we're going to do there is see how this is um, seven away from that wall there. Suppose it, all right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There is where we're going to make our other flying buttress. Huzzah! I lined it up that way so that way the top of that arch is even with the bottom of that arch. Just about. It looks a little bit nicer and flows so alright. So we're gonna go ahead and do that all around. And then drop all of these pillars down. The last thing you're probably wondering about is the roof. Now I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not that good at making roofs. So now I'm going to put in the world's simplest roof, a bunch of hat slabs on top. Ba ha ha ha. There you have it. Terrible, boring roof. And it doesn't look too bad. For the top roof, I'm going to be even more boring. I'm just going to stair step it all the way up to the top. I really sincerely hope that if you know how to make a cool looking roof, that you do so. I'm just doing this as an example that you can have a pretty ugly looking roof, but because you did your gothic arches first, it'll look a lot better. And BAM! Ugly roof. Alright, now we have half of it done. Ta-da! You have now built yourself some beautiful gothic arches. Well, a big one and a couple of little ones. From here, if you're planning on building a church, you can basically just cookie cutter this out. Take one bit, go splat, 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 and you've got yourself a church. 
this is all I'm planning on building with you today. Um, the reason being is that I really think people should take the template that I've built and build their own design based off of it. If you're planning on doing a full cathedral, there are a couple of things to look out for. Number one is that they tend to be shaped like a cross, looking at it from above. The spire tends to be at the center of your cross, right there. If you're looking at floor plans for how actual cathedrals are built, a lot of them don't have perfect squares for their gothic arches, so beware of that. I would still recommend trying to keep perfect squares as often as you can. Um, bell towers are always at the front of the building. They're usually just a giant spiral staircase leading all the way up to the top. The main difficult thing I would say is that a lot of uh, actual cathedrals use this weird circular build where you take the floor pattern and you radiate out to place your pillars and it looks a little bit odd specifically because there are these funky gothic arches off to the side that just, while well, what looks great in real life does not translate very well in our blocky world of Minecraft. So you do the best that you can. You kind of have to flub a lot. The basics are still the same. Um, you find your center point with the whatever cross and then draw diagonals leading from your corners up to the top uh, and then fill in the blanks. Get some nice I hope that you find architecture as fun as I do. I think it's great. Especially in Minecraft, uh, it can be difficult to get it to look right. And I know that you could just make, you know, boxes and you don't have to worry about tensile strength or how what can actually support the weight of your ceilings because everything floats. But everything just looks better when you're able to build the architecture the way it's supposed to look. Anyway, I've given you the basic tools for how to build some gothic architecture. I hope you go out and make some really awesome builds with it. I'd also appreciate getting your feedback on this video. If you liked it, please leave a like and please, please comment. This is a relatively new channel, so any sort of activity really helps me out a lot. Thank you. I hope to be able to make more videos for you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.